Hi, my name is Jasmine, aka Black Girl Absolute. Today, I'm just going to go over five signs that you, as a creative, need to take a break. Uh, See, so yeah, let's jump right in. So it's been a couple of weeks since my last upload to this channel. My last video was a video in which I was experiencing some pretty bad insomnia. I wasn't sure exactly where it came from. Um, it, it really sucked because not getting enough sleep sucks, you know? As someone who has dealt with things like depression and anxiety while being a creative person, I figured I would put this list together just in case it helps anyone else and also as a way for me to do check-ins in the future. So we're gonna start with sign number one, the feeling of needing to drag yourself to the canvas. Um, so I'm gonna be speaking as a painter here because that's my main mode of creativity. Uh, so feel free to sub, you know, like, tablet, computer, you know, pottery wheel, whatever your form of creativity is, feel free to sort of sub that in whenever I use words like canvas or easel. All of these are going to be applicable no matter what sort of creativity that you use. I'm just using the one that's most familiar to me. So no pun intended, we're going to paint a picture here. Uh, so just imagine, you know, it's your usual painting time, like you designate some sort of time in the week where you want to paint, or, you know, you may be more like me who just spontaneously paints whenever uh, I feel like it. You find that instead of feeling this really joyous reaction, which is kind of has been the normal reaction that you feel whenever you go to create, like you're creating something new or you're perfecting this technique, whatever makes you really excited about, you know, partaking in the artistic process, you find that instead it starts to feel like a chore. Like you're sort of dragging yourself over to the canvas, you're kind of putting it off, you know, I, maybe I'll just watch a couple more YouTube videos or a couple more episodes of this TV show. Uh, maybe instead I'll just go and clean things. <laughs> you know, these are kind of like very traditional signs that, you know, there may be something missing where this thing that you used to take a lot of joy in starts to become more of a an obligation. And so if you're finding that all of that, you know, passion and excitement is feeling evaporated, that may be a good time for you to sort of take some time to yourself away from the easel, away from the canvas, and kind of just take some time with working on yourself and figuring out, you know, what about this is causing you to feel this way. It may be that you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself, or it may just be that you're burnt out. I've had this particular sign happen to me several times. Uh, I once had a period where I just stopped creating things for like, I think a few months on end. Uh, and it was originally very worrying because again, this is something that I found so much joy in and I, I really couldn't understand why I didn't want to create things anymore. But also at the time I was feeling very burnt out because I had just graduated college and I had started a new job like maybe a week afterwards. Uh, and so it was just a lot of stress at once. And so obviously my brain just needed a bit of, you know, a slowing down. No matter how long that spark seems to go away, it will always come back. So don't worry, take some time for yourself. No judgments here. So sign number two. So this one is kind of weird because it's kind of the opposite problem of sign number one. Uh, and that kind of makes it a bit harder to really nail down that, you know, this is your body telling you that you need to take a break. What you're going to notice is that you may feel like you're super duper motivated in order to get a piece done. Uh, like, you know, you can't really take your mind off of it. Every chance you get, you're working on the piece. It feels like your motivation has kind of gone through the roof, which, you know, for a lot of us, that feels like a really great feeling at first because it's like, oh wow, I finally have the energy to really get this project that I've wanted to do done for such a long time. And you know, initially that is a really great feeling. What happens if you hyper-focus on this one piece is that sometimes you can get into the practice of skipping meals, where you're kind of just not noticing like, hey, I need to eat, or you know, possibly missing sleep because you're really excited to finish this piece. This isn't something that's really happened to me a lot, but in the few times that it has happened, I've noticed just how it makes me feel the rest of the time that I need to either, you know, go to school, work, take care of my other responsibilities. Everything else can feel a lot more exhausting. And so even though it is amazing that you have a lot of passion for this thing, sometimes taking some space away from it just to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and doing everything that you need to do 
is you know much more important in the long run because you don't want to just create for now you want to create for your lifetime and so now on to sign number three this one is probably the one that makes me the saddest i know i've seen it happen with other artists i know at times it's happened with me including this last stretch of time in which i needed to take a break but what happens is that you know you either have a social media or you have you know friends or relatives who are artists and you see just the amazing work that they put out previously you may have found joy in just analyzing the detail and the, like the precision and all of the different colors and the techniques that people are using and this may have been something that previously filled you with a bit of joy just seeing like how different people are able to attack the process of creating artwork but instead of feeling inspired or instead of feeling just appreciative that there's all of this beautiful artwork out there in the world instead you're feeling a little bit more self-critical uh this is when you're comparing your work to other people's wondering why you know your work doesn't look like someone else's work or you start kind of picking apart the little flaws that you can kind of see in your own work that you don't necessarily see in someone else's. This is kind of if you turn that idiom about, you know, we are our own worst critics, kind of up to an 11. Instead of art being this escape that you can kind of return to whenever everything else is not working out, it becomes this method of punishing yourself. And so for me, when this happened, I had to kind of like mentally remind myself, you know, I am just looking at someone else's work. And no matter what their work looks like, it doesn't say anything about mine. And that kind of helped, at least in the moment, those like really self-critical thoughts to, to just quiet down a little bit, uh, which is really all I needed until I can get to a place where I'm appreciating other people's work again. So now on to sign number four, switching the hand, because before it was this one, now it's this one. So sign number four is about the themes of your work. So um, you may notice going over the portfolio of, you know, all of the things that you create, that there's kind of a consistent theme. Uh, for me, it's going to be things obviously like black women, floral imagery, really bold colors, uh, things like that, like, you know, a very like round and soft aesthetic. For me, it's really easy to notice whenever the themes kind of take a dark turn. So for this tip, if you're noticing that there is more of a negative theme where there usually isn't, uh, this can kind of be a way for your brain to let you know that, you know, you may need time to process some emotions that uh, you possibly aren't giving yourself time to process and I don't want this to be confused for like if your artwork has like kind of like normal dark and moody themes like I think like getting into things that are kind of dark are not necessarily bad they're really not bad at all um and <laughs> some of my favorite artwork from like other creators are like kind of like the little dark and you know um really moody pieces because it, it may be connecting to my past as an emo kid but you know Who's to say for sure? I'm to say for sure, that's definitely it. If you notice that you're getting into subject matter that you really, you know, usually don't and it's not intentional, that may be your mind telling you, you know, you need to process some things. It may not be creativity necessarily that you need to take a break from, but it could be other things in your life that are causing this stress. And so, so yeah, definitely pay attention to that. So now for sign number five. This one is a bit tricky because for me, you know, art is, a great way for me to channel a lot of emotions that have been really hard to process um, like that was kind of the main reason why I got into creating things is because as a kid I just couldn't find the words to say to really express how I was feeling but things like poetry things like drawing and eventually things like painting were really instrumental with getting me to a place where I could be more vocal about what my needs are and how to meet them and so of course this is you know an amazing thing if that's what art is able to do for you if that's a way for you to really channel and process a lot of these really difficult emotions but if it's the only way that you're able to do so and you find that the things that you're trying to process are getting like you know more and more intense it may be time for you to look for some other methods in order to help you know spur that process along i know for me in the middle of last year there was kind of this like week-long process where I kept working on this like really really sad but you know heartfelt poem about death. I couldn't figure out why I wanted to write this poem so bad like lines about it just kept coming to my mind and I kept writing them down and I kept like rearranging the poem 
and I noticed that the poem was making me cry every time I read it. I brought this up in my next therapy session afterwards that I feel like this was a sign that I just really needed to cry because, you know, there's a lot of different things happening. Of course, last year being 2020, everything was happening at once. And so that was kind of a sign, I think like the day after I took a mental health day from work because I just needed some time just to breathe and process things. And so, you know, the process of using artwork as a way to channel emotions is great. You know, it's obviously a an amazing way to connect with other people because if you're really tapping into yourself, it makes it so much easier for that work to connect with someone else because, you know, they also might be feeling what you're going through. You know, sometimes I've noticed that I'll process something that's really deep and then after the creative process ends, you know, sometimes there's a continuation where I'm able to continue being introspective about that thing. And sometimes there isn't a way for me to do that. And on the days in which like, you know, things are really busy and I can't really set aside time to create, I've noticed whenever I've heavily relied on being creative as the only way to process those things that on those days I kind of felt a little lost. These are signs that I've taken from my life. Um, I've been doing this again for 10 years now <laughs> with uh, just acrylic painting and I, you know, I, I don't even know how long I've been writing poetry. These were things that have consistently popped up over time that have coincided with me taking mental health breaks. Our bodies and our brains are also creative and so they'll give you multiple different ways of letting you know that you need a break. And so making sure that we're kind of keying into those and paying attention and being aware is really important. If you are creative and you know you have some other signs that you need to take a mental health break that I didn't mention in this video, please let me know below. I would love to hear the ways in which you've been able to tap into your body and your mind whenever you need to take a break. This is not something I've always gotten right. Um, it's taken a very long time for me to listen to my body and to actually take breaks in order to make sure that, again, this is a lifelong creative process and not just something that I do for right now. And so thank you all for being so, so, so patient um, as I took some time for myself. But I do have some interesting videos that I am planning, so I hope you uh, kind of stick around and check those out. If you are new to this channel, which I saw there was a bunch of you that subscribed during my break, welcome. It is wonderful to see you. I hope that put out some stuff that's gonna make you really happy for all those people that have been patient thank you so much um i super duper appreciate it as always you are enough and i hope you take care uh my voice is really raspy today